Welcome to another edition of the Hawk Off the Press podcast. I'm your host, Gazette Hawkeyes reporter, John Steffi. I'm excited to welcome the new Iowa radio color analyst, Pat Inger, onto the podcast. Pat, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. So has it said in yet that you're the new Ed Podolak? <laughs> you know, it, not really. It, it was weird. I, I went up to, uh, we had a Learfield golf outing on Friday, and that was kind of my first uh First public appearance, I guess, and they had uh, I think it was Dolph talked, and then Fran McCaffrey talked, and then Beth Getz talked, and then Coach Ferentz talked. And I'm like, all right, Pat Anger, you're up. And I'm like, what am I even doing here? <laughs> like, I don't belong <laughs> with any of these. Like, I am very low on the totem pole there. But um, you know, to be to be honest, it's been it's been quite a whirlwind here um, this last week, just with appearances and interviews and, and commitments and stuff. Um, little exhausting, but you know, it's what I wanted and I'm excited about it. Um, and I, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun and, and just to be able to be around that program again, it was so good to me. Um, and a huge part of my life, um, is something that I definitely don't take lightly and I'm definitely very, very excited and, and looking forward to kind of, kind of getting things moving. So kind of taking you back your, you know, about a decade or so to when your NFL career wrapped up, did you see broadcasting as something in the cards? No, ne- never, never in a million years, to be honest with you. I, um, you know, I, I work at a credit union. I never thought I'd be a banker. Um, never thought I'd be on the radio. Um, but it's, you know, it's it's life. And you never know where life is going to take you. And, and I've been very fortunate with people that I've been surrounded by my whole life and played with played with great teammates, was coached by great people. And, uh, you know, opportunities like this, they, they don't come along. Um, so I'm uh, looking forward to hopefully seizing that opportunity and, and doing everybody justice. So how did the opportunity kind of come about? Um, so they reached out, uh, would have been maybe about a month and a half ago-ish. Um, they had a list of guys and they were trying to uh, just kind of gauge interest. And, um, you know, for me, I... First thing I did, obviously, was ask my wife, and she's like, "Oh yeah, for sure, um, you know, give it a shot." And then I, you know, I asked uh, the head of IH where I work, I specifically like credit union, and I was kind of nervous there because obviously there's a, there's a time commitment involved, and and I've got a great job. I just switched over to business development, and community funding, which has been which has been great. I did mortgages for a long time, and so I was kind of nervous uh, about what they would say because um, obviously this is right now this you know my my work is my number one priority and. Um, you know, his Brian Laufenberg is his name. And, 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 you know, basically they said, and Ann McMillan, they said, Hey, you know, if it helps you, it helps us. And, and we will support you fully. And I just thought that was so great, especially like, you know, with as crazy as it's been since the announcement came, you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of commitments and stuff and, and they've been fully supportive and Hey, you know, you take care of what you got to take care of. We'll, you know, we'll figure it out here. So that's been, that's been very good. Um, and then, um, you know, did a couple interviews um, over Zoom, and then we did the game simulation, and that was kind of the last last part of it. And and that was really when it kind of became a dream that I didn't really know that I had, and um, it was just so much fun. And and Dolph is great. Dolph is great. Like I've said before, you could put my dog up there, and Dolph would have a good broadcast. Um, so that was it, it. Was great. So that's kind of when I was like, man, yeah, I really want this. This would be awesome. But also, it was a, it was a point when I was like, hey. You know, I, I'm very content with everything that's happened throughout this process, and I'm very thankful that I was even considered. Um, and obviously, you know, when I got the gig, I'm, I'm very happy and, and very um, honored that the decision makers at the university and in Learfield and, um, you know, chose me because, you know, there were the other guys that were in the um, in the uh, the simulation and the final final four, just tremendous, tremendous people. Um, so either way they went, it would have been completely fine. And then you had kind of a fun game to choose from, or I guess not choose from, but get given for that kind of test run with Gary. What was that like, you know, going through the end of that Iowa Michigan state game? Yeah, it was a great fourth quarter. It was a great, it was, it was, I think it was a tough, it was a tough game up until that point, but it was, it was a tremendous fourth quarter. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was something that I, you know, we were actually at that game. Um, and I, I don't like traffic. So I'm like, all right, you know, fourth quarter started. I'm like, well, let's get out of here. I had all my kids and everything with me. 
Um, so I actually, I actually didn't even, I was there. I didn't even watch the fourth quarter. I listened to it on the radio. I actually listened to Dolphin Ned call it. So it was kind of interesting how that worked out. What do you remember what you were saying then as you were broadcasting Cooper's touchdown there? Uh, you know, it, obviously it, it, it's different because we were watching the TV copy, so it's not really live and you kind of know what's going to happen and all that stuff. But, um, you know, I think for me, the thing with Cooper, that was, that was really the point where he etched himself in Hawkeye history as an all-time great. Um, and I think that's, I think I said something along those lines. And then kind of what should fans expect to see you from the booth or expect to see kind of stylistically from you when, you know, week one comes around? Um, you know, probably half the time making fun of myself, trying to figure out what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably that. You know, and it's it's gonna be it'll it's gonna be a huge learning year. I think week to week, hopefully week to week, I will continue to get better. Um, but it's you know it, it's new to me, um, and, and luckily for me, I'm working with with a legend. You know, Gary Dolphin, an all time great. Um, you know, I won't be as polished as as Ed was. Um, he did it for a long time. He knew exactly what to do and what to say. And um, so for me, I think it's it's going to be pure. It's going to be real. It's going to be me. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully I continue to improve and continue to get better at it. When you're mentioning pure, did you have to, did they have to bleep anything out in the test run with Dolph? No, 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 they did not. Fortunately, <laughs> yes. And then um, what's this kind of like for you now preparing for kind of your first broadcasting job at a place that obviously you have such a strong connection to and such fondness for? Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's exciting. Um, you know, for me, obviously, you know, I, I would like to know the players and, and get to know them personally. And because I think if, if it, it makes it a little bit better, if you know who these kids are, it makes their successes mean so much more. And, and when they fail, which they will, which I did many times, um, it makes it a little bit easier to deal with when, you know, especially, you know, I know what these kids have gone through. I know what they go through every week just to get to Saturday, but knowing what they've gone through in their life to, to get to that point. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's something that, that that's good to know. And, and um, everybody has a story and, and hopefully I can help, uh, help bring that out to the masses. Is there a game this year in particular that you're especially looking forward to being on the call for? You know, for me, I'm taking it week by week. So the the first one, Illinois State, for me, that's uh, that that right now, that's the one that excites me. And then, kind of, you're mentioning, you know, having been in the position of the current players. Anything you wish you knew back then that you know now? Um, you know, I think it it didn't really take me until probably my sophomore year to kind of figure it out. Um. I think if they understand that the Iowa staff has all the answers to all the questions, um, it literally, if, if you do what they say, not only are you going to have a successful career at Iowa, you're going to have a successful life. And I think that the earlier you realize that, the better. And sometimes it's not easy. Like, you know, there's, there's times where it's tough, um, but just know everything is, is happening. That's happening it is for a reason. Um, they've been through it before. Um, and I think, um, you know, in order to be, and I have a quote here, you know, in order to be a good Hawkeye linebacker, um, you've got to make being a good Hawkeye linebacker the most important thing in your life. And I think if they can do that at their position and understand that and, and focus everything on that, um, it makes things a lot easier. Obviously, these kids have a lot more um, outside things than I did when I was playing. We didn't have the NIL. We, social media wasn't huge. So, um I had a lot less to worry about than these kids do. <laughs> so um, it is a little bit different, uh, definitely a lot different than when I played. Um, they probably have a lot of people pulling them in, in many different directions. Um, but I think, I mean, those are probably the two main things. And obviously, hey, enjoy it because it's quick. Before you know it, you'll be working at a credit union and, and you'll be on the radio. So enjoy, enjoy the moments on the field as much as you can. And then what's been kind of your impressions from seems like the last couple of years, the linebacker position has been especially strong at Iowa. What's kind of been your takeaway from the last few years of their production? No, oh, it's been tremendous. And, and, you know, I, I hate to give Seth Wallace all this credit because I, I love Seth and I, I, I he's a good friend personally, but 
Um, he's done a tremendous job and, and he's a great coach and, and a good man. Um, but you look at the guys that they've had, it's, uh, you know, Jack Campbell, um, just a freak, just a complete freak. Um, and a good kid too. And then I've, I've had the chance to meet, uh, Jay Higgins and Nick Jackson recently. Um, and just completely, completely blown away with just the quality of men that those kids are like, they are just solid individuals. Um, and what I love most about them is, you know, obviously they have a bunch of talent and they're, they're quick and they're fast and they, you know, they break down deep offenses and, and all that, but, the way that they fight and scrap and run to the ball like that is like, that's Iowa football. Like they play like Iowa linebackers and just really looking forward to, to speaking their praises all, uh, all year. And then kind of away from everything Hawkeyes, your business development role, what does that kind of look like for you from a day-to-day standpoint? Yeah. So it's, you know, it's bringing in, it's bringing in new businesses. It's bringing in, you know, deposits and stuff to, to the credit union. Um, a lot of calls, a lot of cold calls, a lot of, a lot of going out, uh, taking people out to lunch and golfing and stuff like that. Um, just building relationships, getting out in the community. And, and uh, uh, it's kind of, it's pretty cool. So another part of my, uh, my job is that I, you know, since we're a credit union, we give back to the communities that we serve. And, and for me, uh, part of my job is community funding. So I, I'm in charge of, you know, donating money back to the community and, and finding places and, and people that are in need and, 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 and helping everybody out. And that's, and that is so awesome. Like that's, like, that's the best part. 100%. Just being able to get out of the community and help people. And, you know, just recently we were able to, um, you know, pay off some uh, overdue lunch balances at some schools. And, and that's, that's just awesome. That's just so awesome. And, and helping out the, the Riverbend food bank. And it's, uh, there's a lot of, and, you know, and the one thing too, I think a lot of people in general, they take for granted the work of nonprofits. Um, and nonprofits are there because there's a need. And I think people sometimes they're, and, and I think we're all guilty of that at times. Like, oh, it's just another nonprofit asking for money. Well, there, there's a need there. And, and being able to to be a small part of, of, of helping them out, like that's just so rewarding, so rewarding. And, and I'm, I'm very happy that I'm in the position that I'm in. I was asking you earlier if you had been able to picture yourself as a broadcaster. Did you think you'd be you know, for this long to a banker when you were in your playing career? <laughs> right. No, absolutely not. Not a chance. You know, it's funny when I got done playing, I did, uh, I did strength and conditioning for a while. I trained some kids around the community, some police officers. Um, uh, I helped out at Augustana college and, um, that was fun. It was, you know, it was all of that. It was all that I knew at that time. Um, and I'm a terrible businessman because I had a really hard time charging people money, especially, you know, kids that, you know, put them through a workout. And I understand what these kids are going through and their families and stuff. And um, obviously when you're not charging people, you're not making any money. So that's, uh, that's hard. And, and one of the things too, you know, my kids were pretty young at that time. And um, with the training aspect, you're, you're gone when your kids are home and you're home when your kids are gone. Um Obviously, I wanted to be a be a part of their lives, and uh, you know, sometimes they probably don't uh, don't want that, but uh, I want to be a part of their lives and their journey. And I did feel guilty training other people's kids and and not my own. Um, and you know, I got into banking, and you know, it was you know, I didn't miss any of my kids' stuff. You know, from when I first started Sockfire the Bank to here, you know, it, it, big priority um, on family and. Um, yeah, you know, I think at one point my my boss, uh, Kurt Johnston, uh, basically was like, "Hey, if you if I I do not want you to ever miss any of your kids' events or school events or anything like that." So, um, basically, it was like, "Hey, I'll, I will be very upset if you do miss your kids' stuff." Um, so that like that that's awesome, and that's uh, those are that's people that I that I want to work for, um, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, the the banking thing has definitely been different, but I've kind of caught my groove here a little bit and. I'm very lucky to be at IH Mr. Valley Credit Union and, and uh, be around the people that I'm around because it's, you know, we want our communities to do good. We want the people in here to do good. And um, there's just a lot of good people here. And I, I'm very, very happy. With that past work with strength and conditioning, do your kids in youth sports now have like the best like strength and conditioning regiments for like a 12 year old and a 10 year old or? You know, if they listen to me, they would. Um, but uh, you know, you know, you know, dads don't know anything. Dads don't know anything. So, 
pretty soon, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to push it any, you know, as a parent and as with kids and sports, it's, it's, there's a fine line, right? You want them to do well and you, um, and you want to push them, you know, you want them to, you know, achieve, you know, greatness and all that stuff, but you also want them to have fun and you want them to enjoy being a kid. So there's that like fine line and I'm kind of, I'm telling it one way or the other, um, depending on the day. Um, so really currently right now, I don't, I don't do anything personally with them. Um, as far as the strength and conditioning goes, we do have, have a, a guy that does help them out. Um, but it's not, I mean, it's not anything crazy. Um, it's, it's not like we're doing it every day. It's not very regiment or anything like that, but eventually I think when my 12 year old gets, uh, gets a little bit over, older, I will probably, uh, get involved a little bit more. And we've got a nice, I've got a, you know, little garage gym, a little COVID garage gym that I've, that I have a nice little setup in there. And, um, we, I will bring him in there real soon and get him some muscles. <laughs> well, Pat, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate you. And thanks to our listeners for tuning in. Until next time, we will talk Hawks later.